Finding your first job in dentisting is not easy. Hiring your first associate, also difficult. I have created Dentist Job Connect to solve this problem. My name is Paul Dr. Nacho Goodman, founder of Dental Nachos, and connecting dentists for jobs is one of my favorite things to do. It embraces our amazing nacho spirit of collaboration, community, and helping each other. To learn more how we can help you, text JOB to 215-543-6454. Are you looking to hire an associate in the next six months? And what am I walking on? This is Paul, Dr. Nacho Goodman, founder of Dental Nachos and Dennis Job Connect. I'm so excited to have my new walking treadmill. I love walking. I love being active. Not easy to do in the winter. So I want to thank Gary Bird. When I was on his recent podcast, I said, Gary, what are you walking on? He goes, I got a walking treadmill. Now I have one too. Small tips like that can make you more successful. Now back to that question. Are you looking to hire an associate? in the next six months? If the answer to that question is maybe, yes, not sure, text HIRE to 215-543-6454. Dennis Job Connect will send you back CE to determine if you're ready to hire an associate, how to be successful in the interview process. What metrics should you be looking for to add an associate to your practice? Dennis Job Connect has helped so many practice owners bond together with a dentist to share in the joy of full contact arts and crafts on people that don't want to be there. That's dentisting, full contact arts and crafts that we're doing on patients each day. If you need help, if you're thinking about getting an associate, we want to give you a free resource to check and see if that's you. And then if you would like us to help you, just text HIRE to 215-543-6454. Now, if you're watching this and you're looking for an associate job, that's the right fit for you. And also an associate job that won't make you cry inside each day. There are awesome associate positions out there where associate dentists are living their best dentisting life. And there's also positions that associates wish they never took, wish they'd ask way more questions about, positions where they're not getting paid, where they're not in environments that are positive. Arm yourself with knowledge to be prepared and aware. If you text JOB to 215-543-6454, we're going to text you back content, a checklist for success, what to ask on the interview process, how to spot red flags. It's all there and more. And if you would like to browse our open positions right now across the U.S., just text JOB to 215-543-6454, and we'll text you a list of those positions. Working together to share more responsible information in the most important part of our journey, getting a job after dental school and residency, adding an associate to your awesome practice. It's more complex than you think but Dennis Job Connect will help you be competent, be comfortable, and enjoy the process of bonding together with other dentists. Are you a member of our Dennis Job Connect program, the Higher Associate Program, and looking to enhance your success? There are three to four ways you can do this to improve the success of finding that associate to share the joy of full contact arts and crafts, which is dentistry. Number one, we will post your job with two to three awesome features of what's going to happen in your dental office. Share with our Dentist Job Connect team two to three awesome things about your position and we will make a post on one of our social media platforms to showcase that. Number two, on Matchmaking Monday on our Dental Nachos and Dentist Job Connect Facebook group, we list all of the open positions. So please make sure to look for that post and in the comments, share the link to apply to your job. Number three is one that all of our moms told us back in the day. Just be yourself. Go out into the Dental Nachos Facebook community, the Dentist Job Connect Facebook community, our Instagram platforms, and share more about you. Why you became a dentist. What do you like about your dental office? Sometimes just things as simple as your favorite TV show. This will make you appear like the friendly member of our community that you are. And when dentists are looking to find a position, they say, oh yeah, that's someone who posts on the group. So to learn more about this and to get help from us, just text HIRE to 215-543-6454. You can email jobconnect at dentalnachos.com as well. My goal is to bond the dental community together. We all need better places to work. We all need helpful associates, just like in my office, to check hygiene patients, to share in the work, overflow work, to do work when we get to go on vacation. So you cannot do any of that without an associate. So that's why we've created the Higher Associate Program just for you to enhance your success, decrease stress, and reduce the number of times you feel like crying inside a day.
As a medium aged dentist and dad, I watch a lot of Netflix. I click around to find something interesting, a program, a documentary, a new TV show, and I thought, imagine if we could create this for dentistry. Could we come up with a platform that had real CE courses, bonus content, interviews with industry leaders, and patient communication tips just for you? That is why I've created Dental Nacho Flix. Dental Nacho Flix is a platform that not only has CE, but has the fun stuff, the leadership stuff, the practice management stuff that you do not get in dental school. To learn more about Dental Nacho Flix, visit DentalNachos.com. I would like to share with you the awesomeness of Dental Nacho Flick. This is Paul Dr. Nacho Goodman, the founder of Dental Nachos and Dentist Job Connect. And we are so proud to release Dental Nacho Flicks in any time, anywhere learning resource. Simply go to dentalnachos.com uh, and check out Dental Nacho Flicks. There's three options, a three-day pass for $3, great deal, 30 days for $30, and a season pass of six months for $59. At the current time of this recording, just text FLIX, F-L-I-X, to 215-543-6454, and we will text you back how you can get a free 30-day test pass. What are you going to learn on Dental Nacho Flix? You are going to learn clinical dentistry, like endo and digital dentistry, troubleshooting crowns with a prosthodontist, implant dentistry, so many toppings for you to choose from. We have study club recordings. We have asked Dr. Nacho anything. We have career decision-making tips, like how to buy a dental practice without making a $30,000 mistake. At the end, we have bonus nachos, talking tips, interviews I've done with amazing people. This is all, you can access all of this from your phone in a super easy way to learn, earn CE, and have more fun in your dentisting life. I'm so proud to have created Dental Nacho Flicks with the help of my amazing team. What do I like even more than nachos? Super easy answer, coffee. Coffee is one of my favorite things. I love coming to Suprema here in Center City, Philadelphia. Come to Philadelphia, you got to check it out right here on Pine Street. Now, what do dentists like even more than awesome CE? Awesome CE for free. Dental Nacho Flix is an amazing on-demand, anytime, anywhere platform that you can access from your phone, from your couch, from your TV, from your treadmill, anywhere to learn and earn CE. To get a free 30-day pass, just text FLIX, F-L-I-X, to 215-543-6454. Text FLIX to 215-543-6454. think you're on the best level? Do you need a dentisting coach? Someone to help you get to the next level. Is this your level and you want to get to the next level? What's wrong with your level? Your level stinks. What if you think you're on the best level? There's no such thing as that. If you even think you're on the best level, that's one of the limitations of your life. You can always get to the next level. I had a client once giving 110%. That stunk. I got him to use 114%. I don't know if that's how math works, but I can help you. I had one client who was so successful, he had a private jet. After working with me, he's now like Gary Vee. He wants to buy the New York Jets. My name is Dr. Paul Goodman, and all of that is total nonsense. I'm a normal dentist coach. I'm a dentist myself. I help dentists buy practices find jobs, hire their first associate, and most of all, just be happier, less grumbly in their dentisting life. It's like we, if we fed Mr. Grumbly nachos. If you reach out to us at dentalnachos.com or email us at salsa@dentalnachos.com, we have so many toppings to help you build your morale, make more money, deliver better patient care, and most of all, just be happier each day. So reach out to us at dentalnachos.com. I would love to help you. buying your first practice. The mistake I made with was with us buying a second practice, but we overpaid by at least $30,000 and here's why. Cash flow is so important. So this $300,000 practice was only profiting $100,000. So another actionable takeaway. 
a good way to value a practice is two times the net profit, one and a half to two times the net profit, not just 70% of collections. So this broker valued it at $215,000 and we just paid it. There were no Facebook groups, there were no podcasts, we didn't have information on this, we just paid the asking price. And I know that we could have paid at least $30,000 less because it was a practice that was in distress. So if, you ever, if you're buying a practice that's in distress, the owner is sick, they have to sell quickly. That is an unfortunate life circumstance for the selling dentist. But you as the buyer, that practice doesn't have the same value as one where the owner might be able to stay on afterwards. So buying your first dental practice is so important. As someone who helps dentists sell their dental practices, I meet dentists at the end of their career. And they have often had multiple houses, sometimes multiple spouses, but just one dental practice. So what does that mean? That one dental practice will stick with you through your career. What a special day at the coffee shop. We have a special guest. Who are you? Zach. And why are you here with me today? Because I have um, a break from school. A break from school. So were you going to hang with us at Nacho headquarters? What would you bring to occupy yourself for the day? Um, I brought an iPad, a book, and a puzzle. Oh, that sounds like a great one. What grade are you in? First. That's great. Yeah, I hear you're doing, do you like your school? Yeah. What I found about you is you're, you're, you're just such a good friend to everyone at school. What do you guys like to do at school, like, for fun time? Um, we like to play at recess, and I like art. Art and recess? You're super creative, and your friends are lucky to have you as a friend, and you're lucky to have them as friends. That's awesome. Yeah. A few more questions for the interview. What would you say that I'm really good at? Um, you're really good at being a dad. Oh, thanks for saying that. Um, you're really awesome being a daughter because you're creative and you're smart and you're funny, but you know what you're the best at? Being a great sister to your sister. Thanks. Thanks for hanging with me today. I love you. Welcome to our awesome CE on TV event. I'm Paul Dr. Nacho Goodman. So excited for our speaker tonight, Dr. Tahir Dune. Before we have Dr. Dune come up, we're going to share a good idea from a Dental Nacho sponsor. I'm ready for Mike to hear. We're ready. What Tahir? We're ready. One second. We'll bring Mike up first. Sorry, I know I got you excited. So you could you could pop back for one minute with your screen. Perfect. So Mike Matthews from Fire Gang. He's a sponsor at the Chicago meeting, but he's willing to pop by with us and talk with us for a few minutes. Mike, uh, Dr. Dune's going to talk about all on four full arch implant cases. Yep. You guys do marketing. Have you seen an uptick in, in, in interest in implant cases? Tell us a little about what you guys see at Fire Gang. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just to be straight to the point, I mean, we're helping dentists by driving new patients in record numbers with laser like precision, particularly when it comes to implant patients. We are driving between 17 and 20 new implant uh, cases started for all the dentists we're working with, and many of them are five figures. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's absolutely been an uptick uh, for sure, and our dentists are killing it, and we're just happy to come alongside them and partner with them to help them do that. And what I will share is in life, ask people what they wish they did more of. Ask people what they wish if they went back, could have done differently. And for me, I wish I invested in more marketing. We've invested in a lot of marketing, direct mail, pay-per-click, but I wish I'd done more of it to bring in the cases that I want. Because when you use a service like you guys, you get to increase the happiness level of everybody in the practice, from the patients, the team, yeah. and you, the dentist. Well, the problem is when you talk to four or five different dentists and you ask them, hey, what is marketing? They're going to give you four or five different answers. To be clear, marketing to us at Fire Gang means new patients, the end. We are not a dental marketing company. We are a revenue generation company. Yeah. And the vehicle in which we do that is dental marketing. So the rest is PR and collateral. New patients equals marketing, the end. Before I let you go and enjoy Chicago, a couple of things I want to share. You can text Fire Gang to 215-543-6454. You guys always have a great nacho sponsor deal going on to work with you guys. But what if there's a dentist saying, you know what? I get all my patients from word of mouth. I get all my patients from people I see at the grocery store. There aren't patients sitting around in the area that you can find on the internet. Maybe just share with us some value that, you know, I'll say that, you know, patients come in that literally live five miles away from our practice yeah. that you know, do not come in through traditional marketing methods. They use right. the power of the internet. Just share with our audience why that's so powerful right now, especially at this time on earth. Yeah, well, I mean, right before this started, I saw one of your videos, Paul, that said, hey, you can always get to the next level, no matter how good you are. And that is completely applicable here. I mean, the reality is 
we have, and these are not one-off cases, we have one dentist who within six weeks of starting our advanced implant funnel, $146,000 plus in new five-figure implant cases. Another dentist that we're working with, she got $120,000 in the first three weeks. And the problem is most dentists don't spend time or dollars working, you know, spending money on advertising for implant patients. Why? Because there's a lot of tire kickers. We work the leads, we pre-qualify the people. So it's basically 20 minutes, walk in, they already know you're an expert, shake hands, ask questions, smile a lot. They already know what they can afford. So when you drop the $30,000 number on them or whatever the case may be, they're not gonna be scared. They know what they can do. Awesome, I appreciate sharing value. One of the things I wanna talk about, you're at the Chicago meeting, You know, go up and down, even exhibit halls and ask companies what they do to help dentists because you can go to Dr. Dune's courses, but if you go back to your office and you're not getting the patients, you're gonna be disappointed and not necessarily with money. You're not even gonna to get to do the new thing you learned. So it's important to bond together, use a dental term, both your marketing and the clinical skills that you use. So thanks so much, Mike. If someone wanted to reach out to you directly, if they're just watching this right now, how could they reach out to you directly? I know people in text yeah. your gang to 215-543-6454, but how could they reach out to you directly? They can call me directly at 509-642-6690, or they can email me at Michael Matthews with one T, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-M-A-T-H-E-W-S at firegang.com. We'll be more than happy to give them a 20-minute strategy session, not a sales call. We'll look at what they're doing today. We'll take, demystify everything they need to be doing. Then they can do it themselves or they can talk to us how we might be able to help them. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Go enjoy Chicago. Thanks for spending time with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Take it easy, guys. Before I bring up our main speaker, I want to share. I love doing this. I'm 44. Back in the day, I used to say, can I have my CE paper with the code? Well, it's 2022. There's no paper, just virtual. When you want to take an Uber, you don't write them a letter, do you? You take out your phone and you call the, you, you don't even call the Uber, you use the app for an Uber. Well, CE Zoom is how we provide CE for you. So if you're watching in live, please go into the chat right now and Morgan will drop our registration code into the chat and you get this code, copy and paste it, put it in your notes because you're here now. And then in 50 minutes, we're going to give you a code that you're going to put into this registration link to get your totally free CE. If you're watching on demand and this is not live, there's going to be a five question quiz to get self-study CE. So if you're here live, we're getting people coming in. Dennis, you don't like to show up on time to a virtual event or a real event. Not my first rodeo. I run a lot of me meetings in person, I run a lot of Zoom meetings. That's why I play the videos. Nobody likes to show up on time, no matter what time it is. We want our patients to be on time, but we don't come on time for the CE. That's kind of weird. We are gonna bring up our speaker in just a second, but please go into the chat right now and get the CE code, CE registration code, if C registration link, if you would like C, there's going to be a code at the end. So now I am ready to bring up the awesome Dr. Tahir Dune. He is our speaker on Dental Nachos CE on TV. Uh, thanks for being here. I want to talk with you guys for a few minutes. So both of you guys just introduce yourself. CE has not started. Okay, there's a lot of rules with CE. There's a CE police. If I break the rules, they come in, they tackle me, the CE is over. So the CE hasn't started yet. So you can talk about yourselves. You guys introduce yourselves uh, to our audience here tonight. So uh, yeah, Paul, thank you for having us. Um, so my name's Dr. Dune. I have a practice out in uh, Northern Colorado, graduated 2012 from UPenn. And uh, next to me is Chris Richards and I'll let him kind of take it from here. Yeah, my name is Chris Richards. I'm the executive director for our general practice and then a handful of other companies, including Colorado Surgical Institute. And what you guys do, Chris, you guys offer courses in all phases of dentistry, uh, but a, a real focus on the different levels of learning implants. Is that correct, uh, Tahir? Yeah, we have a program really for, for anyone, especially with students and younger docs not getting as many reps as the, the old dogs used to get. You know, I'm talking about you and me, Paul. Of course, I got a great uh, beard. Like we yeah, you know, we got a little <laughs> experience in the beard here. Um, so we have a course that does live patient hands-on courses done by the attendees where it's uh, fillings and crowns and root canals. We have a course for wisdom teeth oh. and extractions and socket preservation, single implant placements, all the way up to full arch, the entire digital workflow using 3D printers and all of the above. Awesome. Well, have to see. We're going to talk more about that. You guys can share your screen. I'm going to read your intro. I'll officially start the C for everybody watching. Please ask your questions in the Q&A. 
I may uh, interject and ask them at the time to Dr. Duna. We may do them at the end. This, this topic generates a ton of awesome questions. So this C course is how to implement all on X and high dollar procedures into your general practice. This webinar will cover the clinical skill sets and tricks needed to complete the surgical side of all on X, the equipment needed and systems for a predictable prosthetic result, the critical team members needed to minimize doctor chair time and how to schedule these patients so you don't disrupt your general practice. We're, uh, Dr. Dune's gonna talk about profitability, how to assess if the patient is a good candidate, how to present the treatment plan and get increased case acceptance and more. So I'm turning it over to you guys. I'll be back here doing whatever it is that I do back here and you'll see me in 50 minutes. You see me before then, just stop and we'll interject. All right, awesome. So. Guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're talking about full arch procedures, all on X, all on four, you know, whatever you like to call it. Uh, to give you guys a little bit of history, you know, I started doing this procedure about eight years ago. However, you know, didn't really start doing it proficiently or with true intention up until about three years ago. So about three years ago, uh, Chris and my paths mm -hmm. crossed. Uh, I was only doing one or two cases per month. I had the surgical skill set to do it. I knew how to do the prosthetics, but there's a certain marketing connection piece you have to have with the patients, your team, the community to really get this off the ground. So um, when Chris came on board, uh, like I said, we're only doing one or two cases a month. And now that's all I do. You know, I do 10 to 15 arches per month. Uh, I do some orthodontics, some sleep apnea treatment, because what we're finding in our practice is about 80% of the patients who need some kind of reconstructive procedure have some airway issues also. Uh, so what we're going to be talking about is the importance of the connection. We're really going to drive this point home because this is how it's all built, the profitability, uh, surgical case review uh, with everything, screen, surgical case review and um, how to follow up and create more marketing content for your uh, practices. So a few before and after pictures here, we have Sarah, Scott, and Diane. Um, I'm gonna hand the mic to Chris for a little bit. We're gonna kind of riff back and forth and uh, kind of talk about how we can do this with patients and, and the things we need to say to really get that emotional connection with them. So the reason that we put these before and afters and a couple slides down, we're going to watch a video. The reason we put these here first is we, you know, when we first started our program, we, we really just focused on the surgery and some more of the technical aspects, but that's not the end. That's all the middle and that's some of the beginning. These after pictures you see down at the bottom, that's the end in mind. And so we wanted to put this out so we can start with where the story that you're going to be crafting and creating for your patient. That's the story at the very bottom. You can see with Diane there on the right, her hair doesn't even look the same. Um, and you can tell with Sarah on the, on the left, she does her makeup completely different. They're not hiding anymore. They're not hiding behind things. Uh, we couldn't get Scott to, to shave his beard, but you know we do have a lot of patients who come in full bearded and actually we'll see a video of one, um, it's the next one. And so they, they really go through quite a transformation. And so when we're talking about the connection that we have with our patients, it's really more the story that we are creating. And one thing to keep in mind is, you know, for, for the past course we did in February, we had a patient named Jeff Simmons and obviously I use a different name, but uh, he comes in for the consultation, uh, gross decay, infection, periapical pathology, swelling, you name it. He has kind of let himself go. He's depressed. Mm -hmm. He has a four-year-old kid. He's recently divorced. And so he comes in out of just sheer necessity. And he shares this beautiful story with us about his four-year-old kid, how he doesn't smile in front of his son. And, you know, so I have a five-year-old, a two-year-old and a, and a newborn. And it, it struck me like, what is a, an unhappy father to his four-year-old? What is the impact that, that this is going to have? And, and these are my kids, Connor, Claire, and uh, Jonathan. So what is the impact that giving Jeff this procedure and this reconstruction going to do for his son? to grow up with a father who smiles, who goes out, who has a good time, that shows confidence. And, and what would be the impact if, if Jeff didn't have that and he had a father who never smiled? Mm -hmm. and, and these are the messages we talk about with our team. And then if we talk about it from a team retention standpoint, I'm sure the vast majority of us are having a hard time hiring people these days. 
Uh, this is the thing that will keep your team on board because they have purpose. They have something they show up to the office every day and they're fulfilled to do these types of procedures and make this type of impact in people's lives. So we really focus on this connection with the patient because A, it helps you find this sense of purpose and fulfillment in what you do, but then B, like you're changing people's lives and then the revenue that comes with these procedures is arguably the most profitable procedure mm -hmm. you can do in your practice. But without establishing a connection with the patient or at least at, at the very onset, having this, the, the, the connection as the goal, it's really, really easy to lose yourself. We talk with a lot of doctors as they come through our program and they are really focused on the using the right kind of uh, extractor or <laughs> you can tell he has no dental. <laughs> I don't background. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But they're really focused on using the right kind of tools or the right kind of suture mm -hmm. or how to charge and and uh, finance these different cases. And it's really, really, really easy to lose yourself in some of those uh, ancillary pursuits around the dental implants. So by building these connections, you are always going to be successful no matter what you do because you're focused on a human element. Awesome. All right. We got a little video from one of our courses here. Uh, my name is John um, and we did both up or upper and lower uh, full arches and implants. A whole like fallout with losing all of my teeth started when I was in high school. I didn't have proper care at home. Once I got out of high school, I really didn't have the ability to do it myself because I didn't make a whole lot of money. Kind of the breaking point for me when, uh, when I couldn't take it anymore was when the pain wouldn't stop. I was doing emergency dentist visits probably every other week and that was way too expensive so I just had somebody remove them. And then uh, my fiance got me a visit at this dentist office and that was where I found the people that were willing to help me. I'm, I'm a lot happier now because I can smile <laughs> like that and I get a lot of compliments at work from my colleagues because I look better. Um, when I first started losing my teeth and I could see all the holes and the damage and everything else, the infections, I felt like I needed to hide from the world. And when I finally got all my teeth actually removed, I I was kind of thankful for the pandemic in a way. <laughs> Um, cause I, I hid my face with a mask, so, and now I, I can smile. I feel a thousand times better, like I said before. Um, and I like to look at myself in the mirror again. Dr. Rebecca Steinbeck, um, did the majority of the work. Thank you. I also want to say thank you to Dr. Luda. She was awesome. I want to say thank you to Dr. Mark Costas for the work that he did with me and um, getting me to the position I am right now. Uh, my name is John. So the cool thing about this is these are the videos we get at the courses and then they'll leave a testimonial video for our attendees to go build this program in their own practices. And a really awesome thing was his wife has actually lost weight, got healthier, uh, changed her hairstyle mm -hmm. and everything. So like this impact transfers through the family. Uh, so now we're gonna pivot the conversation mm -hmm. into profitability on these cases. And so I'm one of the black belt coaches at DSI with um, the Dental Su Success Institute with Mark. And what we always talk about is plugging the holes in the bucket. So then when you turn on the faucet of revenue, the profitability of the practice is still intact. And so we have different phases for each client. So hopefully this next statement comes across with a little bit of humility, where when I bought my acquisition back in 2017, January 1st of 2017, I started at phase zero 
Practice was doing 1.1 million with a 68% overhead. And then fast forward where we closed out last year, uh, we finished at 4.5 million with a sub 50% overhead. And I say that to show you what's possible in a general practice. So when I took over, it was four days a week, four doctor days per week with two hygienists. Now we have two doctors on board where we're only doing five doctor days per week. So I work two days a week. My, uh, my partner works three days a week and we still have two hygienists. So we only added one doctor day to all of this, but we exponentially grew the practice through good sound business principles, as well as adding these procedures to the practice. So a lot of things we're gonna talk about where it's calculating supplies and materials and making sure that things are profitable. This is how analytic we get with the cost per procedure. We really get down to like the pennies to know exactly how much everything costs. I'm not gonna review every expense line here, but you guys will have this presentation and you can kind of comb through it and maybe set up a similar system uh, in your own practices. So very, very analytic on where every dollar is getting spent within the practice. Now we're, we all know fixed and variable costs. And then we're gonna look at um, on a million dollar practice, it's just an example practice, million dollar practice, what does it cost to staff the practice? And it comes out to $34 per operatory per day. And then what's the facility overhead cost? It's gonna be you know, $120,000 on that million dollar practice. So it's $16 per non-hygiene facility cost per hour. And again, you'll have access to this so you can do the math for your own practices. I encourage you all to do that so you know exactly where the dollars are going. Uh, now we're gonna get into the profitability of this specific procedure. So I've overestimated all these numbers. So granted we get our implants for less than $160 and we get our uh, resin fees for less than that. But if you look at the breakdown, um, if you're placing six implants, you're at about $1,000 for implants. You got the multi-unit abutments, which is the MUAs. Um, I'm going to teach you guys later how to do autogenous grafting, where we're going to reduce the ridge with double action rongeurs, save the bone graft material. It's the best thing that you can use for the patient, which has osteoinductive and conductive properties versus allograft, which is only conductive, but you use that as a mixture in your bone grafting and it's free and it's the best thing you can actually use. If we look at what it costs from an overhead perspective on payroll, we've estimated two assistants working roughly about 14 hours each for the surgery, the post-op, the occlusal adjustments, the try-ins, the deliveries, coming out to about $350 disposables for this procedure, about $430. If you own your own lab equipment, it costs about $4,000 to make the prosthetic work and do everything all together with the overhead from everything we've talked about before. If you do not own your own lab equipment, then that cost would be about $7,200. If you're an owner paying an associate on a $25,000 uh, arch, that's about $7,500. So if you decide to make the pivot into buying all the lab equipment, and I would say don't buy all this right off the bat. I started off with uh, just an intraoral scanner and a 3D printer, and that's actually how we teach most of our dentists how to do that. But as you start doing more repetition, you can invest in a mill that can do all your single units and your bridge work. You can choose the Roland mill or the X mill. I chose the X mill, but the Roland mill is a very good mill as well. Um, the iMetric scanners, the photogametry that, um, you know, is starting to make some waves in the industry, but that's back ordered about three months at about $40,000. So if you went with the lab setup with the Roland or the x mill, you're looking at $110,000 all in or $128,000 all in. But let me reiterate that all you need to do this is an intraoral scanner, a CBCT as well, and a 3D printer. So... If you own your own lab on a $25,000 case, your actual profit is gonna be about $21,000 on a case like this. If you outsource your lab work, the actual profit is about $18,000. If you have an associate and a lab, your profit's 
13,500. And if you have an associate and no lab, your profit is $10,000. So any way you kind of piece this together, it's a very profitable procedure. Now at the end, we're kind of allocating in there that you would want to allocate about $2,000 per month at a minimum, specifically just to this procedure for marketing purposes. Uh, my marketing budget nowadays is at about $7,000 per month for this specific procedure. But when I first started, it was in that $2,000 range. So the consultation process, um, in the beginning, you know, I have a general practice. We do everything from A to Z. And when we first started this program, you know, the front office ladies, they're answering phone calls, they're checking in and out of people. They're very busy. They can't take the time to have these deeper conversations with the patients. And some of these phone calls are about an hour long. So that's when Chris, who you guys met earlier, when he came on board and all he did was focus on this one procedure, um, he was able to make this connection with the patients. He was able to run everything from A to Z. So when I had my LASIK done, uh, we went to this big ophthalmology center and the person who answered the call was the person who did my intake, was the person who was uh, at my new patient exam, was the person who's the assistant on my procedure, and she did my one-year follow-up. And so I, I asked the surgeon, and this was like a billion dollar operation, you know, like, how did you get all this put together? And he said they paid consultants millions of dollars to help put these systems in place. And it's, it's really simple. You just need one person who's super compassionate, super empathetic, who has the time to dedicate to these patients to walk them through the entire process, but then also be for, there for them post-operatively to make sure that they're taken care of. So this one person also knows how to do the financing. So it doesn't take away from your general practice. And at the same time, you're protecting your schedule with these free consultations. So we do free consultations for it. Sometimes they show up and sometimes they don't. So we created a little ghost column where we would schedule all the consults. And then when they showed up, it wouldn't necessarily mess with my practice because they would go to the consultation room. Hair, we're going yep. to interrupt this from a question from someone who I find very, very funny and smart. Me, that's the question from me. <laughs> I said something the other day. I was posting a lot about the value of free consults and how I do free consults. I haven't always done them. So authentically, I was sometimes a little bit TSD, what I call that. So dentists, people wouldn't show up. Just talk a little bit more. We have practice owners on here. I have my own brother watching. It is frustrating when a lot of free consoles don't show up, but then you do remember these amazing wins you get. So I'm on board with them, but just, just if, even if it's reviewing what you just said, where do you find free consultations to be really valuable in helping people move forward versus having them pay or a paywall to get in? Yeah, so we did have people pay for the consultations and we had a higher no-show rate and no increase in conversion rate what the person who's doing the intake phone call is assessing is in their mind, they're assessing the risk of this patient based on the conversation they're having. So at the end of the day, if we think they're a high risk, they go into the ghost column and all we schedule them time for is a CBCT. And if they show up, great, they get the CT. Okay, great. Doctor's going to review it and we'll call you back in because they actually have a very high no-show rate. So your team in their gut kind of knows who's going to show and who's not going to and then they're protecting the schedule. And then part two is a free consultation, but goes into no operatory. So it takes no operatory time away from my practice. They go to the CT, they go to an area to take some photography, and then they go to a consultation room. Now, if you don't have a consultation room, then you use the operatory, but you still schedule them in a ghost column if they're a high risk for potentially not showing up. So when you get to the treatment presentation perspective of it all, um, again, this connection, right? Who are they doing it for? Is it Jeff doing it for his four-year-old or Cliff who came in where his grandkids were pointing out that why, why is grandpa missing some teeth or someone who's trying to get a job or they're chronically in pain? Like what exactly are they doing this for? So at the bottom or, or the end of the presentation, I have some links to the wellness hour videos I did with Randy Alvarez, which was a pretty good practice builder for me in terms of full arch. And if you listen to the videos, you're going to hear the verbiage I use uh, when I talk to the patients and when I do my consultations. When I talk to them, I have uh, physical models in the room and I have a bunch of before and after pictures on the screen behind me. 
And I have a file where I have to scroll up and down all these pictures to show them that we have so many transformations. And before I had built my portfolio, um, you know, many years ago, I had a friend who has a lot of these and I kind of mixed all our patients together just so I could show the patients I had done this a lot. And then as I built my own portfolio, I went ahead and deleted all the ones that weren't my own. So we'll have the physical models of dentures. We'll have the physical models of over dentures. I call them snap in and snap out. And I tell them it's still going to go into the jar at the end of the night. And then we have models of 3D printed temps and then uh, zirconia finals. And so I'm very intentional with how I do the console where I make them hold the temporary and I make them hold the zirconia and then they can feel the weight difference. And then I'll clank two zirconias together and say, when you get your finals, if you clank your teeth together, it's gonna to make this resonant sound. So I'm pre-addressing one of the common complaints of a patient in the double arch zirconia at the very end. And then you have to learn how to talk about the money. So for me, um, in the beginning, I was uncomfortable about it. What I would do is, you know, and what I do currently is I'll show them the prices of all the options they have. I have one sheet that's a reconstructive price, and I have another sheet that if they chose to go a conventional dentistry route with extractions, root canals, uh, partials, all of that, they have that option as well. Um, but we talk about proceed finance, we use compassionate finance, we figure out ways to bridge the gap for these patients so we can kind of fit all of these uh, things within their life. So I use proceed finance the most within full arch. And then when it comes to compassionate finance, for those of you that know the model, you're acting as the bank. So I never finance a full case on compassionate finance. I have to at least be paid enough to cover my overhead for the, the case if I'm gonna take all the risk on doing it quote unquote for free until the patient pays over time. There's also creative ways where we had a patient who uh, had turned their life around. The pastor had sent them to our practice and the church did a GoFundMe for the patient. Or they can look at uh, refinancing their house and a lot of people are refining these days or dipping into 401ks. But the thing is, it has to be the right person sitting next to you in the consult room who's good at having this conversation, who's not going to insult the patient. Because if I start having financial conversations, I could say the wrong thing. So what I tell the patient after I review the clinical, tell them the price, because I always tell them the price. Then I'll tell them, hey, Rose sitting next to me here, she speaks the language of finance very fluently. She'll find a way to fit this within your life. Um, I speak the language of dentistry very fluently. So do you have any more clinical questions for me? And then they'll say no, or ask a question or whatever the case may be. And then I tell them, hey, I got to go do a quick round. I'll let you guys chat. And then, you know, Rose will page me. Uh, Rose will page me if she needs me back in the, in the office. And then I gracefully excuse myself. I always shake their hand. Uh, there's something about shaking someone's hand that goes a long way. And, uh, and that typically will seal the deal. But of course, you know, the people need time. There's cases that I'm doing uh, two years later after treatment planning it two, two years later. So remember, you have to beat the drum long enough and these cases will be there. And like Paul Homily said, I don't care when they do the case. I just care that when they choose to do the case and they're ready for it, that they're choosing me to do it. So we're gonna hop right into surgery here. Um, you can extract teeth before the flap or you can extract teeth after the flap. What I choose to do is I choose to do the, uh, ex the flap first so I can visualize the bone. I can squeeze the alveolus as I extract the tooth so I don't fracture the buccal plate. Um, but my partner, Dr. Brisky, who also is the teacher at Colorado Surgical, he does his extractions first and he's a phenomenal surgeon. So either way, it works just fine. If you look at the roof of the mouth, there's two screws in the roof of the mouth. These are uh, tabs, but basically they're just fill up screws. What it allows the designer to do is have a pre-surgical representation of the patient. And then post-surgically, when all the teeth are gone and all the implants are in and all the, the, this edema is in the tissue and they need to merge these files together, they can go to the TADS as a point of reference to merge both things together. So in the mandible, you're gonna put it in at around 18 and 31, and it has to be behind the most distal incision 
So again, those tabs are staying stationary for the entire procedure. So your pre and post uh, scans are accurate. What we'll also do when we're planning bone reduction, inadequate reduction is one of the major issues with all these procedures. Because when you do your preliminary cosmetic pictures, the patient won't be used to smiling the way they usually do. And then you give them this beautiful set of teeth and six months later, the muscles are fully moving and then you can see the prosthetic transition line. So what we'll do is we'll use the CBCT, we'll measure from the incisal edge if the tooth is in an appropriate position to 15 millimeters of reduction. Uh, it depends if you're doing an FP1 or two, maybe you can go to 12 or 13. Uh, but if you always kind of err on the side of caution, you know, 14, 15 is a good place to be uh, in order to hide the tra transition line. If they have this huge, uh, big Julia Roberts smile, then planet FP2, because you might have to reduce so much you're into the sinus or you have blocked yourself out vertically uh, from placing implants because of the base of the nose. We use a very rudimentary tool where we just use this little bowling pencil, wipe it with cavi, obviously toss it after the surgery. And we're drawing on the bone in terms of where our reduction is gonna go. And also when we're doing angled implants, we're drawing on the bone. Uh, I almost like draw a protractor. I'll draw a 90 degree angle and I'll figure out where 30 is, just eyeballing it and just draw 30. And so that way, when I'm doing everything free-handed, um, my post-surgical x-rays look like it's guided because I'm basically just following the lines we've drawn. And it's no knock on people using guides. The guides fit well, they work well. Uh, in my hands, I found the guides only worked, you know, 80% uh, of the time. And then still one out of five times, I have to do it free-handed. And then from a profitability perspective, you know, your cost per case goes up if you're using guides. But if you use guides, you use them well, I mean, keep doing that. Uh, another picture of just how we draw the reduction needed. We also use a Massad ruler. All right, let me go back here. So it's a yellow ruler that we're going to actually measure uh, the amount of reduction needed. And then when we get to the point of reduction, we're going to use these double action rongeurs. So the double action rongeurs are there because the hinge is strong enough to get through some of the cortical bone. We're going to remove and do the ridge reduction with double action rongeurs. We're going to use a stainless steel bowl with saline in it and save all the autogenous bone. And like I said earlier, osteoinductive and conductive and free. And if needed, we'll mix it with the allograft as well. So we're using the double action rongeurs for our reduction. And then here's the Massad ruler. So now we're going to put the Massad ruler. You can just buy it on eBay. They're like 10 or $12. Put it on the crest of the ridge let the upper lip drape down. So you know when the prosthetic is in and if your prosthetic is you know, 15 millimeters or whatever you chose based on your prosthetic design that they won't be showing too much tooth structure at rest and they won't have that protrusive look. So ideally with that, you want around 14 or 15 on the Massad on the maxillary arch. And then you're gonna want about 18 to 25 max on the, the lower arch. And it's because with men, as we age, gravity works against us and we're gonna be showing uh, more lower teeth and you want to be able to, to not have lower teeth showing when they're in repose or at rest. And then we're gonna use a nice sharp lance drill. What I will do, because oftentimes after you do your reduction, you're getting rid of the crestal bone. I'll actually take my lance drill and before running the drill, I'm pushing it into the bone to assess the density of the bone. And of course you can look at your CT ahead of time and be prepared on that end. And if the drill just pushes in, then I know it's gonna be a soft bone protocol and we're gonna undersize the osteotomy significantly so we can get stability on the implants when we place them. And the, the, the rough math is you want about 120 Newton centimeters per arch to load the arch. However, with that said, your distal implants should have at least 30 on them or kind of buyer beware type of situation. Uh, we're always placing six, six implants. So I think there's only like three cases I haven't loaded in the past five years because CT analysis, soft bone protocol, you're usually going to get your stability. 
So all your implants are placed. Uh, we use the Neodent system. I place helixes for about 80% of them. And then I'll use the drive implants that are a little bit more aggressive in thread design if I feel like the stability is gonna be needed. We use these direction indicator pins to make sure that the parallelism of the multi-units is gonna be appropriate before opening our multi-unit abutments and placing them. And then afterwards, you can see the multi-units are placed. Um, in general, we're trying to place the implants in the little triangles of bone that are not in the extraction sites. So there's gonna be a better interface of native bone to the implant versus placing it in the extraction site and then having graft material uh, be the, the bone that needs to turn over and integrate. So that's something that I've changed and we've started approaching it in this way and having better success and better post-operative x-rays. These cylinders are the cylinders that we're gonna place and suture around. And this is what's gonna be used for the scanning or impressions to uh, get soft tissue location and implant location. And then the iMetric photogammetry unit is gonna have separate um, dice that go on top of the multi-unit. And then the de designer is gonna merge pre-op, post-op, and the iMetric data all together to get your perfect passivity. Uh, grafting around the implants, it's auto and allo with some PRP. We do a little bit of the uh, PRP ponchos or PRF, you know, for those of you that do the PRF protocol. And then we're going to suture. So suturing can often, if you're doing interrupted sutures, take a very long time. So what we do is we start in the midline and we do a horizontal mattress to the posterior, um, whatever side you choose to do first. And then we'll come back with a continuous suture all the way back. And so the horizontal mattress is a passive uh, suture where it's going to take tension out of the tissue. And then you're going to see where your tissue is going to bunch up. Anywhere it bunches up around your cylinder, you're going to trim off the extra tissue. So there's no tissue on top of these cylinders so you can get accurate scan data. Then you come back with your continuous and this is all one suture. Then you come back with your continuous and you sling that thing down and you tie down every loose end and we tie it off in the midline because it's always easier to tie a suture in the front of the mouth than it is in the back of the mouth. And we use resorbable sutures. We use the 4.0 PGCLs, and then we'll do the exact same on the other side. Uh, some multi-unit choices to pick from. Typically I'm using a 2.5 height uh, on surgical dates. And then after they're done healing, then we'll go ahead and switch it out to 1.5 or 3.5. Uh, but typically with adequate reduction and tissue control, I'd say 90% of the multi-units I use are going to be a 2.5 uh, tissue height. And the Neoden system just makes it super easy uh, from an inventory perspective. And again, we teach on profitability. We teach the business of dentistry and inventory control and all of the above kind of just tie hand in hand. Uh, this is a picture of the iMetric. So these are the dice we're talking about. So what it does is it gets a 100% accurate position of the implant location. So now there's no temp cylinders, there's no pickups, there's no verification jigs, there's no acrylic. Uh, these things just screw right in. So what we do is we'll do the surgery. And my first surgery, my first arch took five hours to do. And then now through repetition, you know, I'm about an hour on an edentulous case and an hour and a half on a patient who has teeth and needs extractions and ridge reduction and all of the above. But the beauty of this system is then I get to leave the room and my assistants do all the scanning. They do the medit scans or whatever intraoral scanner you use. They do the iometric scans, send it to the designer. We send the patient home and then my team gets to 3D print everything and have the time to get it all done and deliver the next day. Now you can absolutely do this whole thing uh, same day, but every once in a while, the 3D printer will misfire. And then you have a, a patient who's tired and waiting. So we tend to do next day conversions just so we can deliver on what we're promising them. But with the iMetric, my team can screw in the prosthetic. They can adjust the occlusion. I come in and just dial it in a little bit, make sure cuspid guidance and all that stuff is there. And of course, you know, I'll take all, all the credit too, you know, after I do minimal work. 
Here's a picture of the tads. So these will go in the palette. Uh, designers like to see three of them. So I'll either do a tripod or I'll just do three in a row down the suture and then in the mandible one and one. And that's usually adequate. Here's a uh, scan of the um, tads preoperatively. And then if you can imagine post-surgically, the tads are in the exact same place. So now the designer can merge those images back together. And then a picture of the zirconia. Uh, we have the mill in house. Uh, the zirconia is milling directly to the multi-unit. So again, no tie bases, no cement debonds. None of those problems exist. And we're doing all of this in-house nowadays. So we're gonna review a few cases in terms of the cases we've done at um, the Colorado Surgical Institute. So all the cases you're gonna see are done by our students. Shauna here, I mean, a lot of people think this picture is Photoshopped, but you know, this is how she came in. And she had a friend who had done a procedure with us three years ago, saw the transformation that had occurred. And um, you know, patients are like this out there. Now granted, maybe not always as extreme as Shauna, but you know, they just, they keep their lip down, they wear their mask, uh, we confuse them as unhappy people. And then socially, they just don't go out anymore. So confidence is a muscle. And if someone was confident in their younger years and then have deteriorated through the years and they've turned introverted as a result of, of shame and embarrassment, they no longer have the confidence. And so like a beautiful thing we can give someone back um, if you guys saw the video earlier, like John looks in the mirror and then he puts it down and looks again and puts it down because they can't conceptually realize like how quickly all of that can come back. So here's a picture of Shauna or a pano of Shauna preoperatively, uh, significant amounts of infection and bone loss. So uh, for the upper arch, all you're going to be looking at is reducing that to the level. So everything is leveled out appropriately you're gonna be cognizant of not reducing the upper left. So then you expose the sinus. And then on the lower, you're gonna reduce probably to the level of where 23 is. Here's her pre-plan. She did it hers in two stages. So her upper arch was already done. Sorry, bear with me. Here we go, another pre-plan. Um, this is how we plan out every surgery. We get slices of every single area of where going to place these implants and we have to be cognizant of there's a lot of air in the medullary and cancellous bone here so when i push the drill in or the attendee pushed the drill in for shauna they just sunk in so we barely prepped anything and we were putting in very large diameter implants for her and getting stability that way uh, because we knew going in it was going to be a, a soft bone protocol so you can see all the implants place um, we got the 30 degree angles on the maxilla. We went up and down on the mandible. And here's her after. And these are 3D printed temps, literally given to her the very next day. Um, obviously, the designer made the teeth a little shorter, but they're still a little bit long if I'm being critical. Uh, Shauna was over, over the moon on this one. And so, you know, I wouldn't change this for three months. And then when she gets ready for zirconias, I'd shorten it up. So the teeth follow the vermilion border a little bit better. Uh, you can see the cuspid at number eight is, you know, two millimeters too long, but the patients are never going to care when you see something like this. Um, it's something that you can critique later on, but I mean, these transformations are just profound. We saw John's case here. Um, you know, he was dedentulated early because of just pain and emergency dentistry. Uh, the sinuses were very pneumatized and took up a lot of space. So we planned out 16 millimeter implants to do bicortical stabilization. So when you pop through the cortical bone in the nose or the sinus, it goes against conventional wisdom to go through this uh, cortical bone. But if you don't and your implant hits cortical bone and you still keep trying to thread it, the, the threads will break loose and you'll lose the stability. So if you ever feel your drill hitting this stuff, just poke right through it. Obviously you don't drop into it deep, but poke a couple millimeters into it. So when your implant threads in, if it's long enough to engage it, you will actually get stability on the apex of your implant and get that bicortical stabilization. And then that's how you get implants to integrate and be stable um, post-surgically. So we did some block rafting for John at seven and 10. 
And then he had, you know, numerous implants placed as well as pterygoid implants to, to get stability for him. And here's John's post-op. John with his family, you know, and the cool thing is they send us pictures of them with their families. And then you can use that in your marketing. And then it just keeps funneling in these patients to keep coming back to you. And it gets more patients saying, oh, I saw John's story. Like John's video has like 15,000 views on Facebook. So we have Jackie also part of our course, uh, gross decay everywhere, surgical plan, implants placed. She had a huge defect in between seven and eight. So we had to skip over that spot. You can see there's not a lot of density there. And, well, and there she is uh, after the surgery. And again, you can see there's a small cant in the occlusal plane, uh, but all of that can be corrected at the three month marker when you do your rescans and redesigns. And then, you know, Jackie and her text messages, you know, on the right side with her son, on the left side with her granddaughter. And it's just really, um, it's really fulfilling to be able to make this type of impact in people's lives, but, but their families' lives as well. And then <laughs> Shauna's picture, take good pictures. Don't let them do, you know, bad before pictures. So make sure your team is trained on good before and after pictures. Ruben's video here, um, you know, Marine came in, has a beautiful, beautiful video. I'm gonna hop over him and Marsha, another one of our um, patients through the educational course, you can see her teeth are too protrusive, but through all the years of anguish for her, this was still so beautiful. And then again, we rescanned, reprinted the arch, brought the teeth back in, very easy fix. And then thanking all of the attendees who come to our course. And these are the videos that you will get from your patients and they're gonna be ecstatic to leave them for you. And then you cycle them back through Facebook, through YouTube, through whatever Instagram, whatever vehicle you're using to get more patients in. And so we usually have you know, uh, 20 full arch docs and 10 docs doing single implants but we're starting to create a whole multitude of courses from general dentistry and root canals and wisdom teeth and socket preservation to full arch and uh, the single implants and all of the above. We got a couple of links here I want you guys to check out, but more so than not, what I'll finish with is um, something that's like kind of near and dear to my heart. So this is a, a picture of my, my grandmother and she actually passed away on the Friday of our course and a uh, beautiful woman, infectious smile, wonderful laugh. And, you know, she, she lived in India, uh, emaciated face, no teeth left at the end of life. And, you know, I was, I was talking at our course about this connection we have, and I just wish someone would have done this procedure for her when she could have physically uh, tolerated it. So my mother could have like buried her the way we all remembered her because I find it so difficult to remember the way she looks unless I look at these pictures because all the FaceTime videos I've done for the past five or seven years of her was just her in, in, in a bad dentition and sunken in face. And she still had this beautiful laugh through it all. But this is the connection we can do. We can create these things for, for our patients, for their families, 
uh, for, for their grandchildren. And it's such a beautiful, powerful thing that we have this opportunity for. So thank you guys uh, for your time, uh, Dr. Goodman for the platform. And uh, you know, I'm always here to help anyone and whatever they need for this journey. Dr. Jair, they, I've seen many of these. This is one of the most outstanding presentations I've seen that's put this together in an hour time block. We still have some time. We're going to do a few questions. want to thank you. You can um, stop your screen share for a minute. After we give the C code, we'll go back to some of your links. But I have some questions because this was just so phenomenal. I mean, I have never seen such a succinct presentation of a all on X thing, A through Z, along with the clinical part. I mean, I know if you've seen me before, I have this guy back here that I said, you know, Dentists like to cry inside and outside. You know, your team's fighting, your patient won't open, insurance adjustments. How can you improve your dental core, your mind skills, your word skills, your hand skills, your heart skills to be happier and help patients? You really showed us how to do that. Let's go back to a couple of things that I want to bring to life for these people watching in. We have dental students, we have new dentists, we have my brother, we have uh, dentists of all ages and stages. Talk about the team. I just my basketball. It's not a real one. I can't palm a basketball, but I want to play in the NBA. But you think of a team of five guys or five women or five people playing basketball, right? Talk to us through a day on who's on the team on these days, right? Give us a game day. You know, forget for a minute about the money. Forget for a minute about the post op. It's eight thirty a.m. Patient's going to come at nine. You're the uh, let's just call you the point guard. I know you do multiple things. Maybe you don't have point guard. Who's in that operatory? I think the people would really like to learn who this before the patient comes in. Yeah. So we have the anesthesiologist set up. We'll bring in a CRNA to sedate. Um, I do IV sedation and oral sedation, but on longer procedures, and I want them to be 100% asleep. You know, we give them the option for the CRNA, and I pref pre you know pr prefer it that way. Uh, I have my lead surgical assistant. And we have our treatment coordinator. So the treatment coordinator meets the patient out front, gives them the whole pep talk, like, hey, you can do this. This is going to be awesome. Everything you've been thinking about, we've been talking about. It's game day. Here we go. And then I'm planning the surgery out in the morning. Uh, the patient comes back, spouse is with them. I come in, I give them the high fives. I say, this is going to be awesome. It's going to feel like five seconds for you. I ate my Wheaties this morning and then uh, give a high five to the spouse, say, hey, we'll give you a call in 15, 20 minutes from when we're wrapping it up so you can you know, come back and you can go run errands or whatever you want to do. And, um, and then the patient gets sedated and my lead dental assistant and me kind of working on that front, we're just working. And then we have a backup assistant that will come in every seven minutes or so and help with whatever we need from an ancillary perspective. Awesome. I mean, that, that just is so helpful for everyone to hear. We actually, I got to connect you with our surgical prosthodontist, mm -hmm. Dr. Rob Slough's amazing guy who does these cases um, as well. And it's just like having this team in place that everyone knows what they're doing is so key. I mean, I did these in my residency, my multi-year GPR back in 2004. And, you know, the dentistry part is the fun part. A lot of time it's the other parts, you know, finding screws, doing this. Is there these things there, converting the denture? Now let's, I want to ask about this question, you know, you're a 2012 grad of, from, of, from dental school. Dental school does not inspire us to say to patients, $50,000 is worth it. You're worth it. This care is worth it. We're so lucky this was invented. This is what I tell patients all the time. We are lucky this is invented. This is like the bionic shark teeth that people get. Your teeth have are time for your teeth to retire. I don't say fail. I say your teeth haven't failed. It's time for them to retire. But what transformed inside of you to confidence is one thing, but it's really about what gave you the self-esteem, the security to say to somebody, this is $60,000 and you're going to be glad you spent $60,000. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question because sometimes we can make it seem easier than it really is. And I've blown a lot of consults early on. And so what we would do is I'd set up the camera uh, somewhere where the patient could hear it or see it or and record myself doing the consultation. And then I'd also give my office manager the ability to come back after the consult and critique me. And she said, yeah, you said that, that was really great. Or you said that, and then you kind of blew it. And we just would talk to each other through it, almost kind of like reviewing the game after the game is over and just reviewing tape and, and seeing, you know, where we could improve and where things were falling short. I kind of equate this to, to like photography or music. 
where, you know, I can download something from Spotify for free, or I can pay hundreds or thousands of dollars to go see the Philharmonic. And out in New York, there's the first string violin guy who went to the subway in regular clothes and just sat there and played. And all these people walk by and only the people who truly kind of got that emotional connection would stop and listen. And 99% of people like missed what was on the wall and it's the connection portion of it. So if you can make this emotional connection with the patient, uh, that's when they know if they're not paying for implants and screws and prosthetics, but they're paying for a quality of life, they're paying for confidence, they're paying for self-esteem. And that's where the conversation is had is at that higher level of, of realization for art, uh, where you can have people come up with quite a bit of money. And, and, and that's one of the things is we, and Paul Homley is fantastic. And he talked about that number inside your stomach that once you say 10,000, 20,000, you start to get weird about it. The patient doesn't. So it's really important that you work with your team and you share the value because I'm working on, uh, I read a good article on Einstein. So it made me think of this, uh, E squared equals MC, which is not his, but mine is empathy and enthusiasm equal more connections. Because when you sit there with a patient and show empathy, but then also enthusiasm for what you can do to help them and not judge them and not think they can't afford it. And now, I mean, there are so many tools that I didn't have. I mean, I'm a 2002 grad uh, to her. I didn't have all these financing companies five years into my career. There was not all these companies jumping into this. So they have created tools to streamline this and remove the friction from financing to systems. So I just think that's, that's truly awesome. So we've gotten close to giving you, um, giving our C code that we're going to talk about here in a minute, but before we give the C code, I'm going to ask one more question, but I would love if we have a lot of people watching in, drop in the chat, one thing you learned, one thing you're inspired to do, one thing you're going to think differently about, drop it into the chat so Tahir can see it, so I, so I can see it, so you can remember yourself. Are you going to go talk more about this tomorrow? Are you going to sign up for a course? Are you going to get some models? Let's just end on this question before we talk about institute. Someone's watching this right now on demand live and they're two years out of school, right? Maybe they did a GPR, not sure if they did a GPR, they can do some extractions, not necessarily a C course specifically, but like, what would you say a good first two steps are? You know, what's a good first two steps to get on the road to one day being someone like you or being someone like Dr. Robson or being whoever they want to be, maybe just doing you know, talking about these cases and restoring, tell us two good steps. A uh, step one is always find a good mentor. Um, you know, and this is a longer conversation probably for another day, but I was three years into uh, being a dentist. My wife's a dentist as well. Uh, very ignorant about the business of dentistry. And I was doing a startup and it failed. And so we actually went broke or I went broke for both of us. And to, to know that you can pivot out of something like that. And then we pivoted into this acquisition that I have now that ended up being the best thing ever. So just knowing that like with mentorship ahead of time, I would have avoided that major business pitfall, but then I also had surgical mentors that helped me through the process as well. Um, find a mentor. Part two would tie into the story I just told is just know that adversity builds character that the like these seemingly like seemingly horrible things that come come around actually can be pivoted through education and knowledge and figuring out what you have in yourself when your your backs against the wall to to create something and to know that even if the worst thing business wise can happen to any of you guys listening that there's still so much beauty on the other end of it I love that. Such a good wrap up. I hope we pull this clip from this. So one of the things I just appreciate being genuine, being vulnerable, you know, you did a startup. What was the main thing where you, you know, I think people think they're easier than they are. And you found out the real life way doesn't have to be the hard way, doesn't have to be the tough way, but you did find out that they weren't. Where did you, where, where was the miscue there that you wouldn't do again? What would a mentor have told you? Like, you can't just do this without a team. This isn't the right area. Tell us more about that. Yes. Yeah, so so there was um, uh, several things that went wrong. I had bad brokerage representation um, where they weren't representing me uh, in full transparency. So they didn't tell me that right down the street, uh, two corporate offices were going to go in three months from me opening. Part two is I had bad legal representation where the contract wasn't written in a way that protected me when the, the property didn't appraise because I was doing a ground up. So it was 
yeah. dirt and we were going to do the whole thing and the property didn't appraise because the developer was pulling comps from a different area that was more expensive than the bank yeah. would appraise the property for and then the bank wouldn't lend enough because i didn't choose the right bank that would over lend above a certain value and then i'd have to come to the table with 200 liquid that i didn't really have at the time because i just got married and just put a down payment on the house and my wife had just got pregnant I was like, oh, this is a beautiful time for everything not to work. Yeah. So it's just, it's the school of hard knocks to learn. Some things in the chat I want to bring to say, someone said, I love how you get the whole office involved. Someone said, I love your tips on communicating with patients and, uh, and value your patients. But what you just shared, shared there, Tara, I'm a transitions broker too. You need a great team to do it all on, on X and you need an even better team to buy or start up a practice. So, you know, you shared there that there were nuances that people on your team you know, either sadly, unintentionally, unawarely, uh, shadily did not put you in the right place for success. So um, that is awesome. We're going to give our CE code out. The way to get the CE code, look in the chat now. My team both will share a text code to get it, and you can just put the code in. This matches with the link from the beginning. So this end the CE is a phenomenal CE course, and we're going to go to the after the CE party. It starts now. I should have like a champagne or something there for the after the CE party. All I have is like this water that I brought from the gym. So um, <laughs> let's now talk about your institute. Okay, this is after the CE. Get the code in the chat. I love to move people forward. One of the best books. I can recommend reading is to sell is human by Daniel Pink. It's so phenomenal. Every dental student should read on day one, every dentist. So how do we move people forward? So let's just start with what does the Colorado Surgical Institute offer on its menu of learning for CE? We're going to drop the link in the chat and the Facebook live team, not, not so team do that, but what's on your menu of CE and tell us what's on hands on and how that works. I know our team would like to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have a 600 page virtual curriculum that spells out every surgical procedure, supplies, instrumentation, equipment, and how to do that. And then we also have uh, everything is hands on live patients where you guys do all the work and they're all patients of my practice. I've been doing this long enough to have a whole Rolodex of patients who uh, otherwise can't afford treatment. And so we, we work with like pastors and different uh, people who have like, hey, this person really deserves this second chance. And we get them into the programs here, truly helping out people who are really deserving. So we have one course that will cover treatment planning, fillings, root canals and crowns and buildups. And we'll do it all digital and mill everything out and do that whole course. And I want to pause you for a second. So I have my awesome brother watching. I have my associates watching. I work as part of a team. Yeah. One of the tremendous values you should be hearing is if you're an associate, you're going to be needed to do those procedures more. And even if you take an all on X course, if you come back to the practice where you're an associate, your practice owner can support it, but they're not easy to go from a few of those cases a month, but it's easy to do more of general dentistry well. You will, you will earn money, you will help patients, you will most definitely make your, the practice owners you work at happy. Have you seen associates take your courses and, and go back and make more money, have more fun, help more patients? Yeah, guaranteed. And then also what we'll do is we'll record all your cases for you. So then you have like almost like a portfolio or resume to take if you're looking for another job or if you're going to go amazing. do a start for acquisition. So then you can prove to the banks that you do these procedures because they always ask for production codes. The next course is single implant placements, extractions and socket preservation and wisdom teeth. And then we have a full arch course where we do the full arches. And you can come if you do full arches already. We have a digital program where you're doing all the digital work with the iMetrics and 3D printers and mills. And then we have a dental assisting training program where you have a separate program to get your assistants trained up because my a lot of what I do is assistant driven. And we have a hygiene training program where your hygienists come in and treat live patients and we'll flap them and use the coolest lasers and they'll take care of implants and prosthetics and learn how to treat all of that from A to Z. And we also have a treatment planning and marketing and office manager training program. So you can train the person who's gonna lock down these cases for you because it takes everything. It takes the team. I, I equate it to you know, the Bulls of the 90s where Phil Jackson did the triangle offense and then he went to the Lakers and did the same thing. You know, all they did were championships. Barkley could not yeah. get past Jordan. No matter what happened, he couldn't get so past. It's marketing. 
it's finance and it's clinical. You got your triangle offense right there. You do those three things well, you got the championship. I love all this. I, I, I kindly encourage an awesome D4 who was uh, 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 asking me for some resume advice. Now, I am a huge, who's on here now, I'm a huge fan of GPRs and AGDs. I'm a huge fan. I've done them, but I'm an even bigger fan of Dennis being successful. So while I do believe that it's really a good idea to do a GPR AGD. And I also will share that there are dentists going back to do one after being in practice for a few years because they realize they're just doing too much basic work. And it's not easy to learn these surgical things in the real world because you can't just say to a patient, hey, Kim is just gonna try your extraction, Mrs. Smith, good luck, right? You guys have created kind of something that looks and feels that way. Go back to that uh, build up crown course. How long is that course like day wise? And what's the investment a dentist would make in it? So, well, first off, we try to be as respectful of your time as possible because I've done every CE course out there. I've gone to all these different countries to learn it. And when I found the opportunity to bring one home stateside, I was like, all right, let's do this and let's make this happen. So you get a virtual curriculum ahead of time with Zoom calls to get as much education done without missing operatory time. So you don't have to give up revenue to be at a course. And then when you come to the course, you already have the pre-work done. Then it's hands-on live patients. We'll still do two hours of just review in the morning before we actually treat patients. And then it's just in teams of two or three, you got the primary, the assistant, the observer, and then we rotate and you just keep going all day long through all the operatories and, uh, and we're actually building a 12,000 square foot facility where we'll have conference rooms and teaching rooms in the basement with a full functional lab and then 17 operatories up top. So it's gonna be set up in a way where you'll have maximum operatory time and max maximum patient interaction time to get this done. Uh, investment wise, we're still kind of uh, figuring out the costs for it, but if you wanted the maximum amount of time of patient time for the weekend, it'd be $12,000. And then if you're looking to kind of split that with a friend and then kind of share and collaborate, then you guys could split it and go half and half. And then you guys share the half amount of patients. I mean, one of the things, what you're doing is just so awesome for our community, because while $12,000 sounds like a lot of money. You know what sounds like a lot of money to her? You know what sounds like a money? $600,000 for dental school. That also sounds like a lot of money, right? So you just went to a four-year CE course where arguably you did not get the skills you need to succeed. But now it's now, and now you're in the real world. And while investing $12,000 would be a huge investment for me as a new dentist, the transformative power of that is if you're paid a third of what you do, it's like $36,000 worth of additional care. And it's not only about just making more money, it's really having more morale for you and your patients. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm guessing that these associates or, or even practice owners, of course, that take this you know, level one course, just like our implant patients are happy they did it when they're done. Yeah, we have um, owners who are sending their associates to us as part of their like CE comp packages. Awesome. And so uh, it just works out well for everyone. I mean, what you've done is I've done implant courses for years and, you know, the, my first implant courses and you kind of can get the patient geared up to, you know, get an implant placed by somebody new while somebody else is watching. These have gone, you know, really well in general, but I've never really thought or known or how to figure out the mousetrap of the crown, the buildup, the root canal. And if you guys have figured this out, that's really what's needed. Fundamental skills, passing, dribbling and shooting. So really these dentists at all levels can feel better about themselves. Yeah, I totally agree because the full arch stuff is like the, the cool, sexy stuff, but it all has to start somewhere. And it comes with, like you said, sound fundamentals. And, you know, I, I have a feeling that like, you know, we live in Philadelphia, all these amazing chefs, top chefs, they're worldwide world, you know, known across the world. But I bet you some nights they probably just like to make regular meals for whoever they have to do. And they don't always want to be on yeah. stage. And like, you know, as dentists, like you don't you wouldn't want to do these cases that are incredibly complex and come with risk and come with these all the time. So it's really, really nice to just learn how to do. I know people would call it bread and butter dentistry, but nobody eats that anymore to hair. I noticed you know, mm -hmm. it's got to be called kale and quinoa dentistry. Nobody, <laughs> nobody bread and butter. Is this a wedding? Am I on my cheat day? So um, 
I love what you've shared. We put the link in the chat and the Facebook Live. What is the link? Just say out loud for the video. What is the website if people want to go check out what you guys yeah. did? So we made it easy. Colorado Surgical Institute.com. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, or the website. Has all the information you guys need. And then, of course, you can always reach out to me personally. I'm the only Ty Hardoon in the world. I've uh, Googled it. So just Facebook message me or anything. And like I said, you know, I've had people who've really significantly helped change my life and career by just giving, you know, time to me when I needed it. And I'm here to pay it forward. That's really awesome. So glad to be collaborating with you guys. I know we're going to do great stuff. Mark's coming out here in May. I know he's flying back for your course afterwards. Mark Costas is just an amazing human being, let alone lone dentist. And uh, we're going to do great things here. I can't thank you enough for this. Here, go to your three awesome uh, children and wife, and we'll see you on the next Dental Nacho CE. All right. Thank you, man. Thanks so much. Everyone who's hung in it with us to this time, you get a special little bonus segment, How Not to Lose $20,000 when Buying or Selling a Practice. It's a really quick two minutes here at the end. I hope you join us for future CE on TVs. My team will drop in the chat how you can do that. Also, if you want to watch all of our content at any time, we have hundreds of hours, clinical, practice management, business, class twos, how to not cry inside, text flicks to 215-543-6454. Imagine making a $20,000 mistake when it comes to one of the biggest decisions of your dentistry career. My name is Paul Dr. Nacho Goodman, and I don't have to imagine that. I made that mistake in purchasing our second dental practice. I did not have the tools to be prepared and aware when purchasing our second dental practice. I did not ask the right questions. I did definitely did not have the right team on my side. So I wanna share with you two tips to avoid making a $20,000 mistake when it comes to buying or selling your dental practice. First tip, wrong team. Do not have the wrong team. Even worse sometimes than wrong team is no team. So wrong team or no team is a big problem. Who should be on this team? Advisors that you trust, like a dental-focused accountant, a dental-focused attorney, possibly a consultant, possibly a financial advisor. Get people in your corner who do this every day and can tell you when things are going well and when things are going sideways. On this team, they should alert you that working with a dual representation broker like I did 10 years ago is dangerous. A dual representation broker makes the claim that they can work for both you, the buyer and the seller at the same time. I believe that this is totally nacho nuts. So ask brokers, are they dual representation? And if they say yes, be very, very, very cautious. Maybe even not work with those type of brokers because for me, it costs me a lot of money and stress. So the first tip to avoid losing $20,000, do not have the wrong team. The second tip to avoid losing $20,000, don't start too late. This especially goes for sellers, but it can be for both. Desperation causes disasters. Desperation causes disasters. If you do not prepare to sell your dental practice before you need to sell your dental practice, it is likely you will make a mistake that costs you at least $20,000. So get a practice analysis, invest in a practice analysis to get the stats of your practice now. See where you need to improve. Do you need to improve your profit? Do you need to get more new patients? Do you need to adjust expenses? Are there things you haven't looked at in a long time that you may be overpaying for? So get a practice analysis, do not start too late, and start to make these changes when they're reasonable. All of us know that feeling of cramming for a test, trying to go on a diet to fit in some sort of outfit that we used to wear years ago. It's uncomfortable, it's unhealthy, it's not good for anyone. So if you are a seller, do not start too late. Get a practice analysis before you need it from a trusted advisor. If you would like help from us connecting with trusted people in this industry, please feel free to text sell to 215-543-6454. If you're a buyer looking to buy your first practice in the next few years, text buy to 215-543-6454. 
you're going to get totally free resources from us to start making these decisions, to start putting yourself on the path to practice ownership or putting yourself on the path to hanging up the handpiece. That sounds very awesome too. So there's two major decisions, buying your dental practice and selling your dental practice. You do not want to make errors that cost you money, that cost you morale, that cost you time, that cause frustrations with your family. I see this as a dental practice broker all the time. So take the time now to act, to get prepared, to make a treatment plan for your transition that makes sense. If you would like to watch any of our content on this, we have hours and hours of content on major career decisions, both CE, interviews, TV shows, talking to industry professionals that can help you, like attorneys, like accountants, like consultants, just text FLICS to 215-543-6454. What you're going to get back